<clears throat> hello, hello, it is Jennifer Sinceri, and it is Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. I am a few minutes early just getting on here and trying to get all the technical components taken care of. <clears throat> Let's see, we're going to wait until we can see a couple people hopping on here. Hmm. Just a minute. How is everyone doing? Are you excited? It is the weekend. I am always excited for the weekend. <laughs> All right. Well, happy Friday, everyone. I am going to get started whether you are watching the live um, or the replay if you're watching the live you're gonna see the red live flashing in the left corner um, if you're watching the replay then I appreciate that also um, let's see go ahead and comment and let me know that you're here and then share the video with your friends that always makes such a huge difference Excuse me, that's how my business will grow. So I appreciate it when you comment, like, love on the video, and then share it with your friends. So tonight I am going to show you a really fun little bit of an origami fold that you can use in your card making. You can do this with any type of occasion card. Tonight I'm going to do a couple Halloween cards. Since we're coming towards the end of September, can you believe it? There's two weeks left of September, and then we are in October. I heard that Walmart had Christmas merchandise already up. Hasn't even been October yet, and they already have Christmas up. I didn't see it when I went, not in my local Walmart, but maybe other people have. Okay. Tonight, um, I am playing with this gorgeous, well, so what, I wouldn't say gorgeous. I would say darling, cute designer series paper. And right now it is currently still available. You can find it in the holiday mini catalog. It is called the cute Halloween designer series paper. It's a six by six pack. You get 48 sheets for $11.50. And it does have a, a bundle that goes with it on pages 50 and 51 in the holiday mini catalog. You'll see the cute Halloween suite. So there is a punch and a stamp set that coordinate with this paper. The punch actually cuts out the cat heads, the pumpkins, and the ghosts. So if you love this paper, you might want to get the punch because it'll save you on some fussy cutting. I will tell you right now, though, the punch and the bundle are on back order till the week of October 11th. So you might not get it for this Halloween if you haven't ordered it yet, but you could purchase it for the following year. Um, the black and white gingham ribbon, which I absolutely love is also on back order right now but when it comes back I believe it's going to be the first week of October you'll want to stock up on that the stars are still available the paper is still available so this is really really cute for those of you that love Halloween give me a shout out if you're watching I can see there are a few people on right now looks like my connection's a little funky can you guys see okay Hey, Carol. How are you? Hi, Shelly. I'm trying to see how come I'm not seeing your comments. Maybe I need to 
Oh, there we are. There we are. Okay, I was I was under my personal account, not my business account. There we go. So, hi, Carol and Shelly. Yes, this is a really cute suite, Shelly. The paper's fun. I'm not a huge fan of Halloween. I'm kind of picky about Halloween, but I loved my favorite page. I like the bats. I think the bats are cute. And then, of course, this is my favorite page because of the kitty cats. Okay. I did pull, I did pull, um couple little stamps from Clever Cats to use on the inside of our cards, just so you know. All right, so let's look at this card. This is what we're going to make tonight. I've got three other cards that we're going to do. So we've got the fun book hinge fold here, okay? But then I've also added a fun origami element to that, and I'm going to show you how to do this, okay? It's, it's super easy. So if you have kids, they are going to sit here and love folding these squares, um, and even adults will love it. So all ages, all um, ability levels can do this. It's got a little bit of a 3D effect on it that you can see. Okay, so let's get started. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Okay, so you're going to want to start with a piece of cardstock, whatever color you end up deciding. I'm just going to pull a full sheet right now so that I can show you how I cut this and how I score it. All right, so a regular size. Hi, Jeannie. Welcome. Regular size is eight and a half by 11. All right, so you're going to want to put your paper in, and you're going to be cutting it this direction. A little piece of glitter right there. And we're going to cut it in half. So half of eight is four. Half of a half is a quarter. So this is going to be four and a quarter. So I'm going to put on the four, and then I come over to this line. That's four and a quarter. Okay. And you're just going to line it up. I love our paper trimmer. I always make sure my paper is right on those lines. Those lines are there to help you. And I love that the lines go all the way down so you can make sure your paper is straight. I don't know about you, but I have used some paper trimmers that didn't have that. And then my paper wasn't straight. So now you have two, two pieces to make two card bases. Hi, Stacy. Then what we're going to do is you are going to then turn it on the 11 inch side. Okay. And half of 11 is five and a half. So here's the five. This is a quarter. This is a half. So we're going to move it to the five and a half line. Now make sure you're not using your cutting blade. The dark blade is the cutting blade. So I'm moving it up all the way to the top. I'm going to only use my light gray and I'm going to score it. Okay. You don't have to press super hard. And then I'm just going to fold that. And then to make the book hinge, I've got my fold here and I'm going to put my fold on the one inch line. All right, just the one inch line. Notice how I'm kind of holding it. Don't use the cutting blade. And then you're going to score it. And you're actually scoring both um, the front and the back. You can see we've, uh, it came through a little bit, but it's not all the way through like I would like. So I just turn it over and I do it again to make sure that both sides get scored well. And then that creates your book hinge. Okay. Hi, Julie. Welcome. All right. So then what we're going to do is you are going to now fold on your score line. Take your uh, bone folder and you're going to burnish that fold so that you get a nice crisp crease. And there's your book hinge. Okay. All right. Super easy, isn't it? Super easy. 
All right, and while I'm thinking of it, before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and adhere this. So what I do is with the book hinge, I'm going to put adhesive right there and bring it in so that it stays sealed, okay? So I'm just going to whip my little stamp and seal plus here. Give it some love. There we go. And then we're just going to, oops, there's a kitty hair. I can tell a gray-haired cat was up on the table. We're going to fold that. And now I've got my book hinge. Isn't that cute? Super duper easy. All right, now for the fun part. So the paper I told you, it's a six by six pack. All right, six by six, six by six. Goodness gracious. So what we're going to do is you're going to start with a three by three square. So half of six is three. You're just going to cut this. You could actually make four of these with one piece of paper. So that's fun. So you would cut it in half at three inches, turn, cut it in half again, and you're going to get four of these squares. All right. A three by three. Oh, I'm so glad, Shelly. You want, you've always wanted to do the book hinge. Awesome. Okay. So now I'm going to show you the origami part of this card. Okay. So we've got a three by three square. Squares are four equal sides. So it's three, 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 all the way around. What you're going to do is you're going to take one corner and meet it to the opposite side. So now just take your time because you want to meet the corner. Okay. And then you're just going to fold. I'm going to grab my bone folder. All right. So we've cut, not cut, we've folded. My goodness. I'm all fumbling over my tongue tonight. All right. So I'm just making sure that's a good crease. And then I'm going to do the other side. So corner to corner, just making sure that it's all lined up, and then fold. Burnish it. Okay, so I think you can see the colored side better. You will notice that you've just got a, if you can see, the fold in the middle and the fold in the middle right there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that it was a rough day at school today. I'm just super tired. I feel like I've been tired all week. Now, you're going to want to decide what part, let me show you my sample again, what part you want to be on the outside and what part you want to be on the inside. Okay. I think I'm going to call this um, an origami window. What do you guys think about that? It kind of looks like a peek through window, doesn't it? So you have to just decide what side do you want, which, which one do you want on the outside and which one do you want on the inside, okay? So I did one already, and I did the orange on the inside, but I'm going to do the black and white on the inside and see which one I like better for this card, okay? Hi, Deanna. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the corner, the little tip, and you're going to fold it to that middle score line. Now, I know it's hard for you to see. Let me put a little, little dot there for you, and it's going to get covered up because we're going to put something cute in the middle. I'll put a little dot here right in the middle. Well, that's not going to work because it's black. Let me grab another color. I want you guys to be able to see. Okay, there's a little blue dot. I don't know if you can see it from where you are. I just put a little dot, a different color, right in the center where my folds crisscrossed. So I'm going to take my corner and I'm going to bring it up to that little mark. And you can put a mark there to help you. It's going to get covered up. So don't worry about it. And we're going to do this for all four corners. 
All right, I'm kind of using my other finger to hold the side and then I crease. It's adorable, you're going to love it. Bring the next one. This is something you could do for get well cards. I think it would be a fun, cheery card. You could do birthday cards. This is uh, the concept you can use with any occasion. I just so happen to be doing Halloween tonight. And then we're going to do the last one. Okay. So I'm making sure that everything's burnished really well. Our bone folders are, I believe, $7. And I use it all the time. Okay, now... What you're going to do, you're going to take this corner, this corner again, and you're going to fold it back out and just fold it to the edge of your paper. Now, based off of the card base, you could make four by four squares, but because I did a book hinge card base, it creates a little bit of a smaller space base right here for the card so that's why I went with a smaller square but you could do four by four squares if you were doing just a regular card base you could go a little bit larger all right totally up to you you can play around with this idea and see what you come up with all right and I'm just bringing up the last one. That one doesn't want to work for me. Okay, there is our little peekaboo window, right? I'm just kind of loosening up those folds so it pops a little bit. Okay, now, I think I made a smaller square, way smaller. I'm gonna have to check what did I do on the first one. Let's see what this one was. I think this is a four. Yeah, this is a four. So you guys can see the difference. This is a four. This is a three. All right. I'm probably going to go with the four. Okay. Now what I did was I cut on a little bit of layer. So this ends up being a four. It's a four by four square. But when I fold it, then it turns into a three by three. So I cut this three and a quarter all the way around. So I just have a little bit of a mat around that. All right. And then I cut another square. So this is another quarter of an inch. So this is three, three and a quarter. This would be three and a half. Guess what the next layer would be? three and three fourths. Okay. So I just go a quarter of an inch larger each time. Now we're going to put kitty cat in the middle. All right. But I'm wondering if he's going to show up. See, I was planning on doing it the other way, but that's okay. You can just Fold it this way. It's already folded like that. No big deal. I think he needs to show up on the white for us to see our kitty cat. So let me just flip it. And that's what you can do. If you like, if you decide, oh, I like the other side better, it doesn't take much to just fix it. So let me just burnish that one more time. Let me move these layers out of the way. All 
Okay. Now, when I made my sample, I did not glue this at all. I just left it. If you want to glue these flaps down, you can do that. But I kind of like how it pops a little bit. It gives it that 3D effect. All right. So now we're going to start gluing down our layers. Let me move my little kitty head so I don't lose him. Okay. You can use whatever adhesive you feel most comfortable with. You don't need a special adhesive with this type of card. Anything will do. That's permanent. We don't want temporary. That would, that would not be good. Then your card will just fall apart. One time I ordered, tempor I didn't realize I had ordered it temporary. I ordered some tape runner on Amazon. And when it got delivered, I realized I had ordered temporary. And I said, what the heck am I going to do with this? So always make sure you're buying the right adhesive. That's why I like our Stampin' Seal Plus, because I know it's going to hold it's not going to fall apart. Okay. I also cut a little strip of paper, which we're going to, I'm going to trim a little bit more to put on my hinge. So let me trim that a little bit more, just a, just a little bit. So that's four and a quarter. Let me measure this, make sure. I think that's four and a quarter. I want it at four. So I have a little bit showing all the way around. Hi, Lori. Welcome. Did you just get off work? Has it been crazy? Okay, we're just going to put our little hinge right here. And then we're going to put this piece here. Now I can decide to pop that up with dimensionals or have it flat. Okay. Um, it's totally up to you. I'm not sure what I want to do. This one I did not pop up with dimensionals. So maybe we see if we like it popped up with dimensionals, we could do that. But I think because I was playing around with this so much, I might need to put a little bit adhesive on this to hold it down. Because it's, what do you guys think? I guess it's not too bad. All right, I'm just going to fold those down so I can put my adhesive on the back. And you could go this way, or you could go this way. You go that way, or this way. Hmm. Maybe I'll go this way. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use my grid paper. I'm putting it on the lines here. We'll put that right in the middle. Okay. And here we go. I don't know. I think I better, probably better do it flat because I don't know. It just looks better to me. This looks better to me. All right, center that. And then we're gonna put our little kitty face in there, our adorable little, little kitty. I'm gonna put him on a dimensional. 
And then we're going to tie a bow on that book hinge. And I'm going to cover up my little dot. You know, if you made a dot, you just cover it up with whatever you're putting in there. Isn't he cute? So cute. All right. Now I'm going to use my black glittered ribbon. Okay. It's got really pretty sparkles on there. And I want those sparkles to be showing. I want them on the right side. Give me a little more slack here. I'm just holding that down so it's nice, good, and tight. I don't want it necessarily right on the crease. Let's put it more in the middle. Help me. There we go. Okay. And then we'll do our little bow. And then we're going to trim. Okay. I'm going to use it a little, little shorter. Throw my little scraps away. There he is on the outside. Cute. Very cute. All right. Now maybe I'll just put, where are my glue dots? Let's grab a glue dot. And maybe that'll help tack it down a little bit. My other one didn't get so floppy, but that was because I folded it one way and kept it that way. This one I switched it. So it's a little more floppy. I'm just going to see what a glue dot looks like. Okay, oops, get off, there we go. Good grief, I can't see it. And the last one. There. All right. I think I'm going to put a little more here. Just because I don't like how it's sticking. There we go. Very cute. All right. Now I'm going to do the insides after I've done all the outsides. Okay. All right. Very cute. Let's go to the next one. I love it. I love it with the stripes and the polka dots. Okay. We're going to do purple, 
and we've got some more layers. Now, let me see. Okay. And I need to cut another square because when I did this, I should have done four by four squares. I made my sample, and then when I made my uh, prepped my materials, I realized I cut them a little too small. So let's grab this one. I'm going to need that piece, and I also need this one. So we're going to cut two more squares at four by four, so I don't mess it up. I'm just going to cut them at the same time. Four, by four. All right, now we're good. Yeah, I think this card uh, looks really, really awesome with lots of layers. I agree. All right, so let's do our fold again. Okay, and I wanted, let's see. I think I'm going to do, no, I want to do this one with this card. That one's for that one. So this one, let's do, and we're going to put the bat in the middle on this one. We're going to use the little bat. So I think maybe he needs to be on that side so we can see him better. So that being said, I'm going to put the black and white on the outside. All right, here we go. I can already tell something's not right. Let me make sure. Let me measure this. Four. It's a little off. There we go. If it doesn't meet in the middle, then you know not all your sides are equal. A square has four equal sides. Okay, so we're going to fold. They should meet in the middle and you not have any um, hanging over. Use my bone folder. And then we're gonna do the other side. Corners meet. And then crease. Okay. So now we take the corner to the middle. Corner to the middle. Corner to the middle. I feel like a broken record. <laughs> Look, you could have a cute little envelope. And the last one. Okay, now the next step is to bring the corners back out to the sides. So I like to just move it to I, so I can see that little bit of the side. It's a little hard when it's this way you can't see over. I kind of move it to the side so I can see where I'm bringing that corner. It really isn't complicated once you've practiced a couple times. Then you know what you're doing. And then you can make a whole bunch of them. So I'm just creasing everything nice. There we go. See how nice and flat that one goes? It's because I didn't mess it up. <laughs> I'm so glad you like these cards. Yay. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to do a bunch of layers. Our little bat's going to go in the middle. Isn't that cute? The little bat. Okay, so, and this one I didn't cut a piece on here, so I might want to, because I think it'll not look finished. 
So I just did several layers that we can move this. I don't think that one will lay flat. Nope. Let me take him out. He falls in there. Okay. Oops. Let's make sure that's in the middle. There we go. When you use it, you want to make sure that you're holding it straight up and down and then lift up. And then you don't have problems. And I always say slow and steady, slow and steady. Don't go super fast like we're used to doing with the um, stamp and seal. Okay, and then let me put my little bat in here with his dimensional. Okay, and then we're going to do these two layers. Oh, uh oh, did I ruin it? All right, I'm going to put that to the side. I'll have to fix it. I went too fast. Doggone it. And here I just told you guys don't go fast. All right. Make sure you've got it nice and centered, even, all the way around. You're seeing those bits of um, glitter from the ribbon. Okay, I'm going to adhere my book hinge. All right, so now that opens. And then we're going to put this here, this here, that, all those layers really make it pop. This one I think I might use some dimensionals on, but I think we need a little scrap. So let me trim this scrap to make it fit on our hinge. This is one. Let's go a little smaller. Let's go quarter of an inch smaller. Let's see if that works. Yep, perfect. Okay, so I have to decide where, if I want to do double dimensionals, I think so. Let's see what that looks like. Let's just see. put right in the middle and then I don't know that might be too much maybe we won't I think it'll be too much He's so cute. I don't like bats, but this is a cute bat. Bats are scary looking. I don't like them. I still remember when I was at summer camp, church summer camp one year, and our cabins were kind of more like a, a dormitory. Um, there were a bunch of rooms all in one building. And somebody left the back door open with the light on. So when we came back from campfire, there was a bat flying around our cabin or our room. 
And of course, all the girls, we were like mm, junior hires, we're screaming our heads off. And so we had to go get our youth pastor. And so he comes in with a broom trying to get this bat out of our the girl's cabin. And all the girls are screaming. Then the bat like almost went in his shirt. Poor thing was scared out of its mind. I don't think I slept a wink that night. <laughs> From all the excitement of this poor little bat in our cabin. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then we're going to trim our bow. Oopsie. Okay. Just play with it. I think that needs to go a little shorter, but... So it's not interfering with those folds. There we go. That looks better. You used to get bats in the church all the time. Oh, goodness gracious. They're, yeah, they're not my favorite creature. Definitely not my favorite creature. Although it could be worse, right? I have another story I could tell you about tarantulas, but we won't go there. Not tonight. Okay. Tarantulas in the shower. I won't go there with you. <laughs> All right. Since there's some sparkles on the ribbon here, what if we put a couple rhinestones? What do you think? Maybe a couple little rhinestones. Add in some of that sparkle. I don't think I like it on right there. Let's move it. We'll move it down here. Okay, there's our next card. Cute. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Do you love it? Can you guys see it? Am I holding it? Okay. Here we go. Isn't that cute? He's so cute. Okay. Last card. You had a squirrel in the church too? My goodness. My goodness. All right. This one's going to have a little, a cute little ghost. A cute little ghost. All right, same, same format. All right, we're going to glue our hinge. So let's do that. And then I have to do the insides. All right. Yeah, little bits of glitter all over. All right. And my little hinge is going to be houses, spooky houses, spooky houses. Oops, that one's too long. I didn't realize it. I'm going to have to cut a little bit off. And I've got it sticky, doggone it. All right. Dog on it. Okay, back down you go. There we go. This is going to be our square, and then we've got some old olive and some pumpkin pie. Okay, so let's mount those. bringing in that pumpkin pie because he's got a little trick-or-treat bag he's holding. All right. I got to 
that piece of glitter on my nail. <laughs> okay. And now let's do our um, fold. So I think I'm going to have him be in here with the houses. Okay. So let's bring our corners together, fold, grab that bone folder, nice crisp folds. That makes everything lay down nicely. And then turn, do it again. You guys are going to be experts. You've seen me do this now three times. Crease. Okay. Now we're going to bring each corner to the middle. Fold. I'll do it one more time. One more time. There's that cute little envelope again. And the last one. And I need to burnish these so that they lay down well. I really do feel like the bone folder makes a big difference. At first, I never really thought bone folders were that big of a deal, but they are. They do. They do help. That piece of glitter is bothering me. Go away. Okay. Now we take the corners and bring them to the outside. Next one. Number three and number four. All right, and then burnish. So it lays down nicely. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to put it this way. So our houses are right, and we'll put our little ghost in the middle. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. Don't say anything. Maybe he'll go away. <laughs> I'll let you guess who it might be. Can't say his name out loud, or he might come over here. All right. Flip these guys off. Yeah, I think you could definitely use this with any DSP. It's a fun fold to use. I think it'll bring in a neat, just a change. It's something new, you know, something different. I'm glad you guys like it. Oh, don't even go there, Stacy. Don't make his head get bigger than it already is. He'd want his own TV show if I let him. Okie dokie. Now, I don't know that this ribbon is going to show up on the black card base. I like the sparkle on it, but I'm not sure if it's going to show up. So what if we use the gingham on this one? It has a little more, you know, it has the white in it. And I think that'll show up a little better. Okay. Yeah, I think that works better.
So the fold is a, you want the, the folded square that you do all the, the origami on. It's four by four. If you do a three by three, it's going to be that size. And that's going to be really small. So you want a four by four. When you end up folding it, it, it turns into a three by three. Okay. So I started with a four by four square and then I did the folding. And then once it's all folded up, it turns into three by three. So, but if you start with a three by three, you're going to get this, which is going to end up being a two by two. And that's really small. Okay. Does that make sense, Shelly? That'd be like, I don't know, maybe that, maybe I'll use this. Maybe I can make a gift tag with this. <laughs> I mean, it would be cute, right? It's just tiny. All right. I don't like the way this bow is. Let's move it going more the other direction. Come on, work with me. Here we go. Okay. Cute, cute, cute. Now I need to decorate my insides. Oh my gosh, it's almost seven o'clock. Yikes. All right. This one will be my ghost, my little ghost. So let's stamp. I pulled, it's Halloween from Clever Cats and there's a little spider too. So I just pulled him. He's a cute spider. He's not a scary spider. All right. And then there is a little spider web stamp that you could use if you wanted to. And then what I did was I just cut out some of the images from the paper and I'm going to put a little little ghost on this one to go with the ghost card. He's eating candy. Um I don't think I'm going to do the stamp for his spider web. I'm just going to use a little a pen and just do a little line right there. Okay. And we'll put this in. Oh, I really like that pumpkin pie with the green, the olive. Looks pretty. Okay, so there's the inside. Gosh, that glitter. There's the inside for that one. And we have our little bat. So I cut one of the, another little bat from the DSP. He's on a branch and he's got his little uh, treat. Um jack-o'-lantern hanging upside down or maybe I should have the bat hanging upside down that makes more sense yeah because the candy would spill out I'm going to use a little bit of liquid glue to put that down um and let me stamp I need to move my little spider though let's take the spider off Okay, let's get a little dot. And the book fold is one inch from the fold, yes. So to do the hinge on the book fold, once you do your, um, your crease on the card, like you normally would do, then you score it at one inch. Yep, and that creates your hinge. Yes, siree, Bob. So 
sometimes I do a lot of stamping. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just play with paper. How about you guys? I, I am a paper girl. I love paper. So cute. Stinking cute. All right, my kitty cat. I can't, I don't know which one's my favorite. I think they're all cute. All right, let's stamp. It's Halloween. I think these will go, I'm going to give these to my nieces. And then we're going to do a little kitty on the inside. Like that. And then there's some candy. Kitty's going to eat some candy and get a tummy ache. And then throw up on the carpet. <laughs> right? My cat, my cat fans know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Okay, there's that one. And then my last one. This was the one I started with. I think I lost a square or a star. I need to put another glue dot on my star. I added those little um, adhesive backed stars. And I put it's Halloween in there already. But let's put a jack-o'-lantern in here. And we can put some candy. Now, if you had the stamp set and the punch, you could definitely stamp these cute little images also. I actually don't have it. I'm going to, I'm debating if I'm going to get them. Because I do like the little, the little jack-o'-lantern. He's cute. Where do I want the candy? Maybe down here. And maybe we'll do the little spider on this one. Okay, and we'll give him a little spider web. All right, it would make really cute Christmas cards. I think it would actually make really cute Easter cards too, for sure. Okay, let me put them all out so you can see them. Oh, I don't have enough room. Let's go two by two. Two by two. There. All right. I think these are adorable. Uh, probably be looking out for one of these cards in my next workshop, not tomorrow's workshop, but I'll probably put this design in one of my workshops, um, so that you guys can try it on your own, um, unless you beat me to it. So I'll probably put this in one of my workshops, probably, um, October, maybe we'll do a Christmas card with it. I'm so glad you like it. Yay. Now don't forget, uh, the next paper pumpkin kit is going to be amazing. And I'm not just saying that it's the, um, peaceful Christmas kit. Just looking at the box, I'm in love with it. I had to take a swig of my diet Coke. Um, so if you don't already subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, uh, you're going to want to. It makes 10 Christmas cards. It coordinates with the Peaceful Christmas uh, suite. Is it called Peaceful Christmas? I think so. And it's the kit's going to be silver foil, gray, real red, and shaded spruce. I think it's going to be lovely. $22 plus tax. The shipping's already included. 
Um, so if you are local to me and you want to just pay me for your kit, I can add it to my subscription or subscribe and then it'll come directly to your house. You won't have to wait for me to deliver it to you. Um, and you can cancel or suspend. Suspend means you just skip a month if you don't want to um, subscribe every month. Okay, so I, I'm excited. Our Christmas kits are our most popular kits, to be perfectly honest with you. And I think this kit's going to sell out. So you're going to want to make sure you subscribe by October 10th. I would make sure you do it before that just so that um, there aren't any problems. Okay? And then don't forget, it is still celebration. You have until September 30th to place an order of $50 or more and qualify for something free in this brochure. Uh, there's really cute stamp sets. The Peaceful Prince Deer paper is really pretty. And then there's the really cute Penguin paper. That's really cute. There's some awesome stamp sets. The Bedazzled. Uh, specialty paper is sold out. So far, that's the only thing that is sold out. So, you have until September 30th to place an order of $50 or more and get something for free. If you are going to place an order, I ask that you use my host code if your order is under $150. If your order is $100 or more, you might want to consider getting the starter kit. You get $125 worth of product plus a free bundle of your choice out of 12. So that could be $50 right there. A paper pumpkin kit, free shipping, free catalogs for only $99 right now. And that is through September 30th. So you have two more weeks to get this awesome deal. Let me know because I would love to add you to my team. So I think that's it, you guys. I don't think I have anything else to share with you tonight. I'm so glad you joined me. Don't forget to give me a like, a thumbs up, or a heart on the video. Please share the video on your Facebook page so that other people will be able to enjoy it. And I will see you guys next week. I hope you have an awesome weekend. Spend time doing something you love. Um, I'm going to see some of you here at my house tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to that. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.